For a case of hyperhidrosis or excess sweating, using our mnemonic old carts as our guide, we want to know the onset or when did it begin. The location, is it localized to the face, palms, or axilla? The duration, is the sweating constant throughout the entire day or only intermittent at certain times of day, such as at night? If it is intermittent, we want to know what times of day and how many times. We could also note the progression. For our note, for any bodily fluid, we include the color and amount. Interestingly, in chrome hydrosis, there is a color to the sweat. Aggravating and alleviating factors and treatments tried. For all cases, we order a CBC, serum electrolytes, and TSH T4. In idiopathic or primary focal hyperhidrosis, our supporting points include excessive sweating, localized to the palms or axilla, and skin changes or dermatitis. In hyperthyroid, we'll see excess sweating, weight loss, heat intolerance, palpitations, and diarrhea. In an acute HIV infection, we'll see night sweats, sore throat, fatigue, fever, and a history of IV drug use or sexual contacts. We'll add an HIV antibody, viral load, and CD4 count. In pulmonary TB, we'll see night sweats, productive cough, possibly with hemoptysis, weight loss, fever, and a history of travel such as to Africa or work exposure as a nurse or in a jail. We'll add a chest x-ray, PPD, and a sputum acid fast smear. In lymphoma or leukemia, we'll see the B symptoms, which include night sweats, fever, and weight loss. We could also see painless lymphadenopathy and a history of being immunocompromised. We'll add an ultrasound, CT, and biopsy of the lymph node. Finally, in pheochromocytoma, we'll see excessive sweating, palpitations, headache, and weight loss. We'll add a urine catecholamine. Right, we'll start the poem exam with hand sanitizer, and we want to ask our SP if we have our permission to examine you. Okay, after he said yes, we'll start with the hint exam. For the eyes, we're primarily concerned for conjunctivitis for URI, so we'll ask the patient to look up. So we verbalize there's no conjunctivitis, no parlor, ask him to look down and verbalize no scleral icterus, no conjunctivitis as well. And then we could also quickly assess the nose to see if there's any rhinorrhea, if he has any runny nose or, con or congestion. And, you know, we don't see it. And then we could go ahead and look into his oral pharynx. So we could do that with the tongue depressor. And we want to uh, use very light pressure for these SPs. We don't want to uh, cause them any pain. So ask them to stick out their tongue and say, ah. And we'll look around and say that there's no visible lesions. Uh, the oral pharynx is clear of exudate. On to lymphadenopathy. So we're going to go ahead and inspect his cervical lymphadenopathy. So we'll start. Next, we're going to go ahead and do submandibular, submental. Okay, we're going to do preauricular and postauricular. Do occipital. And we want to do supraclavicular. So please shrug your shoulders. Okay, good. Okay, so we had no lymphadenopathy. We want to look at the thyroid. So the first thing we'll do is we could uh, visualize the thyroid and see if there's any visible lesions. And a good tip is to offer the patients a glass of water to see if it will help them swallowing. Would you like a glass of water to help yeah, swallowing? Okay. Okay, so the next thing we could do is then feel for the thyroid, so we ask them to take a swallow. Okay, and we don't feel any masses, and we could do one on one side at a time. And then with the thyroid, we're going to introduce this mnemonic that we'll see again with the MSK exam, which is MSRP, and uh, manufacturer suggested retail price. And so this mnemonic will help guide you, along with the thyroid exam, the other components to look or to check for thyroid uh, issues. So we'll start with the M, which is motor. So ask the patient to please make a muscle and we'll test his motor strength. So he has five out of five flexion and five out of five extension. And we're gonna go ahead and move on to sensation, the S. There's no real need for sensation, like a neuro exam for the thyroid, but we're used to this opportunity to let it hold as a placeholder for cyanosis and, and delayed cap refill. So we'll go ahead and look at his fingernails and you don't see any cyanosis. And we could press on his fingers and we don't see any delayed cap refill. We'll look at his reflexes. So we're gonna look at his biceps reflex We'll place our thumb on his biceps tendon, and this would, uh, his normal reflex would produce a two plus response. Okay, and if we were concerned for a case of B12 or hyperreflexia, he would have a three plus response. Okay, you would see that. Uh, now we could uh, assess his radial pulses as well. So we could do one at a time. 
two at a time if you're more comfortable, and we'll verbalize that as a two plus pulse regular rate and rhythm. After we completed the MSRP for his upper extremity, we can now move down to his lower extremity, and we can do the same thing. His motor response on his lower extremity, so I'll go ahead and kick out for me. So he has a five out of five, and then bend in, so a five out of five. And now for sensation, for his lower extremity, we'd ask him to close your eye, please. Close your eyes, and do you feel this equally? Mm -hmm. Could instruct him to relax and we'll do a patellar reflex. So a normal patellar reflex would be like two plus. And then if we were concerned like hyperreflexia or B12, uh, we would get a hyperreflexic response. So just relax. And you'd see something like this. And we can continue to demonstrate with the tap on his Achilles tendon. So we'd start right here. And we would we would get a normal reflex. And if this was a case of B12 and we were concerned about hyperreflexia, he would give us a dramatic uh, response. Okay, you feel that. While we're down here also, we would want to assess his pulses. So his posterior tibial pulse would be behind his uh, medial malleoli. We could confirm that it's a two plus pulse regular rate and rhythm. And now once we're, we're finished down there, it's always a good idea to hand sanitize again. So now we can move on to the palm exam. And so for the palm exam, the best way to do this is to drop down the gown halfway and ask the patient to please uh, sit cross, cross your arms here, and this will hold the gown and keep them uh, protected. So the first thing we want to do is uh, verbalize that there's no visible lesions to the anterior chest, to the posterior chest. Next, we'll palpate. So we'll palpate his chest and just ask him if you have any tenderness there or pain, tenderness or pain. Do the same thing on the back. OK, and now that we've done that, we could go ahead and, and do, we could percuss. So we're going to go left to right spots. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and listen to his uh, lung fields. We'll use the bell of the stethoscope for his above the clavicle, so we'll instruct you on instruct them every time you feel the stethoscope. Please take a breath in and out. Okay, that was a good equal breath. So now we can make a comment that we heard clearer breath sounds, uh, no audible wheezing. We want to use economy and movement to make use of the time and listen to his heart sounds. So the mnemonic we're going to use is apartment M225A. So we'll start off with his aortic in the second intercostal space on the right. Go ahead to this pulmonic, tricuspid, and mitral. And if this was a female patient, you could ask them to please lift up your left breast. comment that we heard an audible S1, S2, no audible S3s or S4s or murmurs, rubs and gallops. This was a case where we were concerned about mono in a poem case. This would be a good time to do the abdominal exam because we finished his, his upper chest. We could lie them down. So is it okay if I lie you down? It's okay. okay, good. You ask them their permission and you don't want to forget to extend the, uh, the leg rest. Start the same way. We'll verbalize that we don't see any visible lesions, and we'll go ahead and progress to auscultation. So for the abdominal exam, we want to auscultate first in four quadrants. OK, now we could verbalize that we heard uh, normal active bowel sounds, and then we'll go ahead and percuss in the four quadrants. And uh, we want to ask them if they have any pain first. You want to avoid those areas. So do you have any pain anywhere? No. Okay, so we'll start in the lower quadrant here, and we'll do superficial first just with one hand. We could make good eye contact with the, with the SP to see if they have any, any pain or if they wince. Not painful at all? Okay, now we'll do, go ahead and do deep, and for that we could just single. We're going to put one hand on top of the other. Any pain at all? Okay, so no pain. And then to conclude, if we were concerned about mono, we want to check hepatomegaly or splenomegaly. So we want to place our hand under his his liver. You can instruct them to please take a deep breath in, 
And now as he breathes out, you don't want to feel anything, any liver border below the, the rib cage. So once you feel the rib cage and no, nothing extending further, you can make the comment that there's no hepatomegaly and you could do the same thing on the swing side. So you could please take a deep breath in. Okay, and now breathe out. And then you can feel the lower border of the left rib cage and no organ extending below it. Okay, so now you can cover them up again. And then you want to help them sit up. And then just ask them if they have any questions. And then that would conclude the exam.